What's up, everybody? Welcome back. December 29th. We have two days left in the new year. And I'm going to dive right in today with the topic that throughout my experience in real estate, I've realized most agents don't have an exit strategy. So what do I mean by that? So we all get into the business, we get our licenses, and we're off and running, right? And we're doing deals year after year. Okay, what is the end game? Have you ever asked yourself that? Do you want to be doing this forever? Unlike manual labor, this is not labor intensive, okay? You can do real estate throughout your life into your later years because it's not so taxing on your body, which is great. However, I don't think anybody wants to work forever. I think everyone should have an exit strategy. And obviously, we're independent contractors. And there's no salary. There's no pension. So when you stop, that's it. Wrong. There is a way that at least for a short amount of time, you can still make money when you get out of the business. One of the agents in Manhattan taught me this a very long time ago. They were in the business, I want to say 35 years, had an insane book of business, complete referral based, and just was a complete monster. Deal after deal after deal. It was amazing. And kind of took me under her wing. I was newer. And she saw my work ethic, she saw my vision and what I wanted to do, how I treated all my clients, and how I took the profession serious, unlike many others, and started to talk to me about buying her book of business. And I remember when she came to me, I was sitting at my desk, and she's like, hey, Greg, I got a question for you. Do you want my business? And in my head, I'm like, hell yeah, I want your business. I think that'd be great. But I'm like, what do you mean by that? And she's like, well, I have about another year and a half in the business full time, like day to day. I said, okay, she had plans. She had money tucked away. She wanted to retire and I think moved like to Portugal or something. I don't remember. But and I said, okay, well, let's sit down and talk numbers and let's talk about what you have in mind, because this was all new to me. I didn't know what I was about to learn. And she said, okay. Why? I I see how you are with your clients. You've helped me out on deals. You've hosted open houses for my properties and my clients. They love you. She goes, what do you feel or how do you feel about buying my book of business for the next five years? And I said, okay, Um, walk me through this because I'm new and I don't understand any of it. And as she started talking, it made great sense. And fast forward, which I'll get to in a little bit, I hooked up a lot of agents with exit strategies. So she said, okay, it's going to be a sliding scale and I'm going to shift my book of business, my contacts, all of that to you. And whatever deals you get out of it, I think the first year she got I think 80% I got 20. Listen, it's found money, but I'm in this for the long-term game. I have a bigger picture and I have a bigger strategy. So to me, 20% of something is better than 100% of nothing. Yes. However, my eye is on the prize of getting most or retaining most of her book of business because that's tre- that's a tremendous add-on to my already growing business. So it can catapult me to the next category of rockstar agent. So first year was like, it's a sliding scale. So I think first year was 20%. She gets 80 and she's literally getting 80 for doing nothing. That's the cost. Year two, 70, 30. Year three, 60, 40. Year four, 50, 50. Year five was 60, 40 me and 40 her. So 60 me, 40 her. After five years, 
Her book is mine. And obviously, you're not going to retain everybody. But if you're good, you can retain most of it. And now that becomes 100% yours. So in my mind and in my business brain makes total sense. And it was a great lesson that I learned. And it was it proved very valuable where it took my business to the next level. So whenever when I was managing a large office and some of the agents, the seasoned agents, they were, you know, getting older and they wanted to not work as much, but they still wanted to work. I would always ask them, well, what's your plan? Or do you have a year in the business, three years in the business, whatever? A lot of them didn't know, and that's the first problem you have to, that step one is figure out how much time you have left in the business, all right? Once you figure that out, work backwards from the problem. So they said, okay, Greg, I want, I, I need the money, which I totally understand. I need, I have another year and a half in me. I said, okay, who do you value in the office or who do you value outside of this office? And they're like, well, what do you mean? I'm like, who do you like doing deals with, number one? And who is a good agent, in your opinion, with similar values, work ethic, professionalism, the whole nine? And they would come to me with a couple people. I said, okay. So in, in my opinion, this worked well for me in the past. I've seen it work well with numerous other people. And I presented the idea of passing along your book of business and having a sliding scale to get paid. And it worked great. They loved the idea. They never heard of it. A lot of these bigger companies are not going to teach you these things. All right. It's going to be the individual agent, these big companies. I said it before, and I've gotten a lot of feedback positive from my episode where I say these big companies, they don't care about you because they don't. All right, good agents are good agents no matter where they're at, and they pay it forward, and they are real people pleasers and want to see others succeed. So I I showed them how to implement that plan that was shown to me, and they struck a deal, and it doesn't have to be five years. It could be longer. It could be shorter, and the, the percentage commission could be totally altered however you want it. You can structure the deal. However you want. My whole point is they like the sliding scale. They can exit, make a little bit more money of, and stepping away and taking the next chapter of their life and not having obviously the financial or the time constraints of doing the day to day operations that they're used to. That being said, I would always and I'm a stickler for this, especially in this business, get everything in writing everything. It's a simple, simple contract you can draw up. I would have it notarized and whatever. It doesn't have to be complicated. It just holds people accountable and it eliminates any potential bad blood. I have never seen a problem with this deal. And I know a lot of people that have implemented it, myself included. So come up with an exit strategy. We don't want to work forever. However, we do want to work smarter and not harder. All right. A lot of coaches and companies and, you know, all the gurus out there that most of them have never sold real estate, never talk about an exit strategy. They always say exit the business, but how do you do that? It's the number one question. How do you do that? This is just one example of how to get taper out of the business and still make some money. All right. It's a win win for both parties. You're winning because you want to retire and fade away, but still make some money. And it's a win for the up and coming agent to get that book of business, start working more contacts so they can really scale to the next level. So super, super important to have an exit strategy. So two days left, and this has been a big year for myself and forever progress. And I know 2024 is going to be huge. I'm getting a lot of questions. I'm getting a lot of feedback. I'm getting a lot of testimonials, which I love. And I'm starting to post them. And you can follow me on Instagram, YouTube, and LinkedIn. And obviously the website foreverprogress.com. 
I am super proud. I am super excited. And I actually just spoke with a, a boutique firm last week with, you know, all the, all their agents and their head of operations, their owner and everything. It was awesome. And it was great to see and feel the energy of positivity and hope and excitement for the next year. There was none of the negative or, oh, the rates or any of this. They're all focused on their own individual businesses, which I commend and I love. And we started bouncing around some marketing ideas, which I think is, you know, some of them need to take their business to the next level. There is absolutely no reason why 2024 can't be your best year in the real estate business. Like I said, I don't care what the rates are. I don't care if it's a buyer's market, a seller's market. People always need a place to live. They always need to buy and sell, and they always need to rent. And I'm going to end with this. Make sure you're going into 2024 fully hedged. So when you're in city environments, it's great because you have condos, co-ops, townhomes, rentals. There's multiple markets within the market to make money. When you're in suburbs, it's cool because you, I'm sure you have, you know, single family homes, multifamily, and you have some apartments. Maybe sometimes it's just single family. You got to try to head yourself as best you can. And if all your eggs are in one basket and something does happen, are you prepared to pivot to continue to make money? I loved working in cities because if the housing market was being weird and people were being hesitant, then you know what? Stepped up the rental game. Rentals fast money and you can still stay afloat and make great money doing rentals. And if you're a great agent, you do a couple rentals, it pays for all your marketing for your sales for the whole year. So you don't have to you know, technically come out of pocket for that. It's all budgeting. So don't poo-poo rentals. A lot of agents think they're better than that. They're above that. They don't need it. However, the best agents service all different areas of real estate, investments, rentals, sales, flips, the whole nine. So make sure you're hedged going into 2024 and don't listen to any of the outside noise because that's all it is. It's just noise. Stay focused on your goals. Stay focused on your business. Your clients come first. And if you do a great job and you're super professional and buttoned up every day, the money will follow. Don't panic. This business is all about momentum and this business takes time. It is not an overnight success. All right, just keep your eye on the prize. It's okay to get down. It's okay to get nervous and question yourself or maybe have a little bit of doubt. That's fine. That's normal. We're all humans. But just let that be a short amount of time. Flip the page and move on. Keep going forward. All right, don't get stuck in that mentality. Every day, do something to be better than yesterday and do something that can create more business, more leads, fill your pipeline. Get better at your craft. There's never a day where you're like, oh, I have nothing to do. There's nothing to do. There's always something to do. You can always sharpen your skills. You can always get better in the mirror talking to clients. You can always get better choosing better words to say when you're in a conversation. All right. Happy New Year. Be safe out there. And I look forward to an awesome 2024. Take care.